Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu. In this and the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the new face tagging feature in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. I'll show you how to tag faces, how to convert your old people keywords for use in face tagging, how to organize your people keywords, and then once you've tagged people, how to find photos with those people in them. Now we've always been able to assign keywords with people's names to photos. What's new is the ability to add tags or keywords to individual faces in photos. This way we know not just that Lisa Williams is in this photo, but exactly who she is. You'll see that face tagging can also make assigning people keywords more efficient, as Lightroom can recognize Lisa Williams next time I do a shoot with her, and I can relatively quickly verify this to assign her name to the new photos. Now, before you do face tagging, Lightroom has to create an index of faces, meaning that it will read through your photos and identify all of the face regions. When you go into People View for the first time, whether or not you have people in Lightroom yet, it will ask you whether you want it to go ahead and index your entire catalog. Now, if you have tens or hundreds of thousands of photos, this could take hours or days. I would suggest not doing this right away. It would run in the background, so you could do other work while it processes, but it will slow your system down, and you may just want to experiment with face tagging first. You can always turn it on later. The alternative, which I choose, is to have it search for faces only for the shoot I'm working on when I go into People View to tag them. Now, if you change your mind and you want your whole catalog indexed, click on the Identity Plate, and under Face Detection, click on this Play button. And of course, you can always pause it again. Let's get started. Here in the Library module, select the folder or collection that you want to work with. If you want to tag your entire catalog, click on All Photographs. I'll work with this family shoot, and then click on the new People View icon, or type the shortcut O. Notice that Lightroom is now detecting faces in this particular shoot. It's building the index of faces. Now we can get started before this finishes. My goal is to get all of the unnamed people up into the Named People section by assigning names. I'm going to skip these stacks for now and start with something really simple, a single face. I can click in the Name field, or with this face selected, use the shortcut Shift-O, and then I'll type a name. I'll hit the Enter or Return key, and then if I scroll up, you'll see that Nancy Smith now shows up under Named People. Now, I choose to do last name space first name. I do this because in the keyword list, our keywords are sorted alphabetically. So by having last name first, I'm keeping families together. Now I'll have more to say in the next video about organizing your keywords. If you do choose last name first, put a space in between last name and first name rather than a comma. Of course, there's nothing wrong with doing first name space last name. Let me go ahead and go down to another photo here, and I'll click to add a name. And I'll hit Enter. Now I can also select multiple faces and give them a name all at once. This first face is selected, so I'll hold down the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows, and I'll click to select each additional face. Now I'll click in the Name field of one of the faces I've selected and type the name. And I would just continue through the faces here. Now let me go up a little bit to show you a couple things that have happened. First, as soon as I started naming people, Lightroom starts suggesting other faces for those names. So this is, in fact, Nancy Smith. So I can hit the check mark. If it's not Nancy, I can simply click in the Name field to put another name, or I can hit the circle with a line through it to return this one to just a question mark. I'll click on the check mark. Now let me scroll up a little bit to talk about stacks. If I click on the badge here to expand the stack, you'll see that Lightroom has grouped together these five faces that it's confident are the same person. If I expand the stack and I confirm that they are in fact the same person, then I would click back on this one of five to collapse the stack and give the whole stack the name. Now let me mention a few shortcuts for working with stacks. First, I can hold down the Alt key on PC or Option key on Mac and move my cursor through the face 
to have it show me all of the faces in the stack. If they are all of the same person, then I'll just type in the name. If I'm not in the name field, let me click out in the face here, I can use the shortcut S to expand the stack, and then S to collapse it again. I can also hold down the S key to expand it, and then take my finger off the S key to collapse it. Now let's say in this case that these aren't the same person. Maybe this is her twin. In that case, I need to click to expand the stack, and then name any individual in the stack that is not correctly grouped with the others. Let's say that this one is, is Laura Stone, and I'll hit Enter. I need to name any individual faces in the stack that are not correctly grouped together. Once I've done that, if there were more photos in the stack, I would just collapse the stack and then name the ones that truly are the same person. On this one, I'll hold the S key down, confirm that they're the same person, lift my finger off the S key, and hit the check mark to confirm. Now you can also drag faces from the unnamed people section up into named people. So I'll drag this one up and drop it on Lily Smith. Now sometimes you may need to actually see the entire photo in order to know who the person is. If you click on the unnamed face, you'll see the entire photo here in the navigator panel. You can also double click on the face and it will open that photo up in loop view with the face selected. New in loop view, we have this feature to turn on or off face regions. So I could type in a name or confirm this name here in loop view, or I could go back to people view to do it. I'll go ahead and hit the check mark. To get back to people view, I'll click on the people icon or type the shortcut O. Let me scroll down a bit to explain a couple more items. Now if you come across a face that you don't have a name for, you can just leave it unnamed, in other words, just ignore it here, or you could give it a keyword like unidentified person. Giving it a keyword like this allows you to later search your library for unidentified people so that you could focus on them later. Now you'll also occasionally come across what's supposed to be a face, but clearly is not. With this selected, if I double click on it to go to loop view, you'll see that it's picked up a little bit of the sweater and considers that a face. Let me go back to people view. In this case, I would simply hit the X to tell Lightroom that it's not a face and it will remove that face region from the photo. So we'll never again see it as a face. Let me scroll back up to named people. If you find later that you misnamed a particular person, you can just click in the name here and change it and it will change it for all four faces. Now at any time in the named people section, I can double click on a person and it will take me to individual person view. Here I could confirm that all of the faces I assigned to Lily Smith are in fact her. And then if there are still untagged faces in my folder or collection that I'm working with, Lightroom will suggest similar faces. Now it will do this regardless of whether there are any realistic similarities. It will sort them in order of probability that they are Lily Smith. I would simply confirm the ones that are and then if I want to tag these other faces, I could do it right here, or I could just ignore these for now and work on them later in people view. Now I'm going to go back to people view, and I'm going to name just one more face to point out one detail I forgot to mention here. This is a stack, so I'll hold the S key down to see what's in the stack, and they're both of her, so I'll lift my finger off the S key, and then I'll name her. Let's say this isn't Amy, so I go ahead and type in the name. I wanted to show you that as soon as I type the S, I get autocomplete options here. These are all of my people keywords, or in other words, keywords that I'm using for face tagging that start with the S. If none of these are this person, I would just keep typing. This is Amy, so I'm going to use the down arrow key on my keyboard to get to the right one. Now I'll hit enter or return to select Amy Smith, and then enter or return again to name the face and it jumps me to the next photo. Now, if over in the keyword list panel, you have keywords for people that you assigned to photos before Lightroom 6, or in other words, without using face tagging, and you want to convert them to true people keywords, 
so that they show up in your list of autocomplete options. You can right-click on these keywords and choose to convert these to person keywords. You can select multiple keywords by clicking on the first, holding the shift key down, clicking on the last, then right-clicking and choosing Convert to Person Keywords. If the keywords you want to convert are in a hierarchy, for example, within a People keyword, I can scroll down here to show you an example of a hierarchy, though this one doesn't happen to be of people. You can right-click on the highest level one, convert that to a person keyword, and it will convert all of the ones within it. I'm going to pause this video while I finish naming these faces. So I've got them all named. The next step in my workflow would be to double-click on each named person and make sure that all the confirmed faces are in fact this person. If not, I would just click and change the name on the ones where I made a mistake. I'd go back to People, double-click on the next one, and do the same. Once you're done, you're confident that all the faces you, you've named are correct. The next important step is to check each of your photos in this shoot to make sure that Lightroom has detected all of the faces. For this, I'm going to go to Loop View, and in the film strip here, I'm going to start on my first photo, and then I'll just work through each one. If you don't see your face region showing, click on the icon here. In this one, I can see that there are three people, and I've got three faces detected, so I'm in good shape. I'll go to the next photo in the film strip. I could use the right arrow key on my keyboard. Lightroom's identified this one. We're good. But when I get to this one, it hasn't identified either face. Lightroom doesn't do a good job with profiles or the backs of people's heads. So with the face icon active, which makes my mouse this crosshairs, I'll click and drag to draw the face, and I'll give this one a name. Now I'll click and drag to draw the other face, and name this one. Hit Enter, hit Enter again. So I would continue all the way through my shoot identifying and naming any faces that Lightroom missed. At this point, I've completed face tagging for this shoot. I want to mention that I think it's a good idea when you're done here in Loop View to click on the icon here to turn off face regions so that your mouse is the zoom tool that you're accustomed to. Otherwise, you won't be able to click to zoom in. Now, before I conclude this video, let me mention that if you consider these face keywords to be private, and if when you export JPEG or other copies of your photos, you don't want these keywords tagging along with your photos, you can choose to remove them from your exported copies. I'll click on the Export button, and I'll scroll down to the Metadata section and choose to remove the person information. So that's the basics of face tagging. In the next video, I'll show you how to organize your people keywords and then find photos with specific people in them. I'm Laura Shue.